Last year, I did my first initial review of the Edge Max Edge Router X version 1.90 firmware, and there's some complaints people had because, you know, I didn't revisit it lately. We still love these devices. We've been deploying them, but I want to do an updated video to specifically address what's on the screen here. The hardware offloading feature was not supported then, but it is now in the latest firmware. So this is the firmware V1.9.0, and we'll close this window. This is firmware version 1.9X hotfix.4. And this is new as of, well, I, I checked it in this latest firmware that's available non-beta. And it works great, and hardware offloading is supported. So we're gonna kind of show you here the setup. I have an iPerf server at 172.16.69.112. My computer's IP address is 192.168.1.38 behind the EdgeMax router. So here is the internal network for the EdgeMax. Here's the external network, 172.16.69.113. So on the same LAN, I'm on the same LAN, on the same LAN as the Edge router routing through it to the 172 network, which is on ETH4 on this. And I have also on that same 172 network a iPerf server, so I can route traffic through this and get an accurate speed test. This always comes up, so that's why I'm addressing it so specifically about how I'm doing the testing, because someone says you're pushing it through it, not routing. This is routed, so pretend it's the internet on the other side. So we're gonna run a speed test real quick. And much like before, we see about the same speeds. We get a few hundred megs per second out of here. And But this is before I turned on the hardware offloading because the default out-of-the-box configuration for these devices, when you run through the wizard and set them up and assign Ethernet through DHCP, it still sets it up with hardware offloading not enabled. So we're gonna SSH into it. I could use the CLI that's built in to do exactly the same thing by clicking the CLI button up at the top. Uh, the font's just really tiny and it's easier to show you this here and the results are exactly the same. I'm going to show you the command to turn hardware offloading on. So, it's H-U-B-N-T, which is, whoops, B-N-T, at 192.168.1.1. UBNT is essentially the root user for these devices. Whatever password you set when you ran the wizard or didn't run it, and the default would be UBNT as the default password if you didn't set a password. And to get these into configure mode, we first say configure. Now, that I'm aware of, you can't do this through the web interface. I tried, because there's an option to put the heart enabled in there, and it gives me an error. I don't know what I did wrong. I know how to do it from the command line, and that seems to be the recommended way in the forums to do it. So we're gonna go into configure. It says you're in edit mode now. So the command is set system offload HWNAT, HWNAT, and I'll leave this command in the links below those steps I did just in case you have trouble reading any of this on a smaller screen, and enable. All right, just kind of walk you through the process here. That sets the hardware NAT enable, which is the hardware offload feature, and we're gonna commit it. which if you notice the screen behind me went blank because it's gonna refresh the page behind me because we've now committed it, say take this change and push it into the router. Then the last part, make sure you do this, hit save. If you don't save, what this did was change the boot time config to actually save this because maybe you turn hardware NAT on but don't wanna save it. When you reboot the router, the feature will go away. So you need to make sure you click save at the end. We're gonna exit. Exit out of, we don't need to be in here no more and I'm back to my computer. Clear. Now, just to jump back over here, it just lets you know the page refresh because it sensed that the config file was changed. So that's all that did, nothing really changes here. The do, thing that will show up in the config tree, go to systems, offload, this is enable. I tried putting enable here and hitting save and it gave me an error. Like I said, I don't know, or I tried putting disable here and it didn't disable. Doing it from the command line works fine. Doing it from that, not so much. I'll leave the dashboard in the background so you can see the traffic going through. So we're gonna run iperf again here. And you don't have to reboot it once you enable the hardware NAT. Once it's, 
it, enab it uh, enables it immediately. And now we're getting pretty much full gigabit speed right through this. That's amazing for a small device that only costs about uh, 50, 60 bucks. You can find these for. They're really good routers. Uh, you hard to beat the price because they actually have a lot of features. They're better than a lot of the consumer devices you can buy that cost twice as much. So uh, they don't have any Wi-Fi built in. Someone always asks that. I'm going to do a more in-depth review with this firmware because it adds more features and more configuration options for these that are easier to do through the interface. But of course, a lot of the power comes from the command line and you can edit specific functions in the command line here. Uh, that's an in-depth review coming probably next week, but this is just an updated speed test because I'm going to link this particular video as an add-on for my previous video on this device to say yes, the new version, get the new firmware, you have no problem routing at gigabit speed. So if you got this great fiber connection coming in um, or you have 500 meg internet from some provider, 600 meg internet, you have that ability to route substantially faster with these devices now with the latest firmware. All right, thanks for watching. Hope you liked the content here. Like and subscribe.